He is risen. And you should respond, he is risen indeed, especially if you watch the sunrise service video before you watch this one. Uh, it's a joy to be with you here on Easter Sunday. I am going to start this with a few announcements. First announcement, I want to remind you of your giving option. A little slide will come up. Also, next week we start an exciting new series, which will be based on musicals called It's a Musical. And I'm doing different musical songs from different musicals themselves, pairing them up with scripture to talk about the themes and the things of that nature. What I hope to do for these YouTube videos is I will include a link underneath that has a clip of the song from somewhere else on YouTube, at least I hope. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are as well. We're also launching our confirmation class on Sunday. Uh, we have a couple confirmands, but for anybody who's interested in joining, please come around that Sunday after church, so next Sunday after church. Again, it's a joy to be with you on this beautiful Easter day. I invite you to bow your heads in prayer with me. Risen Christ, enter our worship and our hearts this day. As you live and move among us, remind us to proclaim and live the life you offer. Inspire us to walk as children of your resurrection each and every day. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. I'm reading the NRSV version, so listen for the voice of God. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know what, that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, and as he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The blank page, the fearful blank page, artists, writers, crafters, handymen of all sort experience this dread. You sit down with your materials in front of you. If you're a painter like myself, your paint's on one side, you have a pencil in hand, and a nice, clean, white sheet of paper sitting in front of you, ready to take whatever ideas you have and soak them into the paper. And you look at the paper, and your mind goes completely blank. Artist block, or writer's block. It's the same feeling you get if you are on a day off and you don't want to waste it, but you also don't want to do anything. So you come up with ideas, but you don't know how to implement those ideas, those types of things. It's a block that every craft person gets when they start a project. You get all the materials together, and you got it all set up, and then you stop and you go, where from here? Now, everybody experiences things in a little different ways and different intensities. Uh, an artist block or any of the other ones I named, can be a short, momentary thing. Just a few minutes of, of staring at a blank page until inspiration strikes. Sometimes it can be a fear of, what if I use my good materials and, and the thing that I do doesn't come out good? I don't want to waste my good materials. Other times it can be a paralyzing experience that we just can't move past. We fear that we're going of uh, doing something because we're going to mess it up. For many artists and writers, the first page of a new journal is the hardest because it sets the tone for the rest of the book. The fear is not in doing new art. The fear is in messing up the whole book with a badly placed piece of art. Resurrection Sunday is a new page, a new page laid open before us that we need to decide how we are going to approach it. 
an invitation to change and develop our own story more, to bring Jesus' influence more in our lives. Over the years, I've spent many years talk, uh, talking, uh, many Easter's talking about the nuances of the text, the little things we often miss that might help us understand historically what is happening. This year, though, I want, to, want you to see the big picture. The big picture is that the story of Jesus enters a new chapter. It's a new page in the journal. It's the start of a new art piece. It's the start of a new project. Most of us freeze up. We don't know where to start. And what we tend to do is go back to business as usual. On Monday, everything's just normal. We need to break that cycle. And fortunately, we do get some clues about how to do that in the text. Jesus gives advice for where to start in the last verse of our reading. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee where they will see me. In other words, go back to the beginning. When you get a project block, what moves do you go through? How do you, how do you get through it? Well, going back to the idea that you first had is going to help you remember why you were starting the project in the first place. A new art or craft or writing project, a new building construction, whatever it is, go back and see what you were comfortable with because by doing that thing that you were comfortable with, you're able to move in new directions and you're able to see how you can grow. Jesus tells the disciples, go back to the beginning. Go and uh, start the journey again. For us, that advice is, can be even more literal. Go back to the beginning of the Gospels. Read it again. Go back to Galilee and see how the story developed. Listen to Jesus' words again. Connect again with Jesus in the text. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves to be different than we were yesterday. With any project, art, or any other one, to be perfect. We, we want things to be perfect. We, we don't want to show flaws. We want whatever we're doing to be a masterpiece. We do this in, in our lives. We, we want every day to work out perfectly. We're, we're aren't go we aren't going to lose our temper. We aren't going to start crying because we miss the loved one. We're, we're going to see God at work in the world around us. Easter reminds us of new life and new opportunities, and we pressure, our, our, pressure ourselves to live into the resurrection. And when we pressure ourselves to live in a new way, we freeze up. Now, obviously, I think we should be living into a new way. Uh, we should be striving to be more like our resurrected Savior. But there's a thread here that we miss. You see, if we pressure ourselves for change, rarely do we make any actual changes. Pressuring ourselves to be more like Jesus doesn't work. When we pressure ourselves, we often get just more stressed. What we need to do is look past that and look, well, I should say look beyond that and look into the past uh, and learn from our experiences so that we can go forward. We're never going to do the things that we did or feel the same way we did in the past, and thank goodness for that. Uh, we're different people. You've grown, right? Uh, or at least you should have. You've changed from the way you were back then. When we reach into the past, when we go back to the beginning of the story, when we go back to Galilee, what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up for success for the future. We are finding a way to walk more like Jesus, reminding ourselves also of how far we've come. You know, when I approach a new sketchbook uh, because of uh, painting, I will often paint something that I'm already comfortable with on the first page. Uh, landscapes are often my go-to where I might paint an animal, such as a mouse. It's something that I've often painted. Painting a landscape, though, reminds me of the reason I enjoy painting. It reminds me of why I fell in love with painting as a medium. It, it renews my desire to paint and learn more. Yet that first painting in a sketchbook, even if I mess it up, it still shows years of development compared to my first landscape paintings way back when. Even when I mess up a new page, uh, I can see how far I've progressed beyond what I used to do. That is what going back to the beginning does for us. It helps us to move forward. It helps us to be more like our risen Savior. 
Resurrection Sunday is when we remember that Jesus has conquered sin and death. Jesus has given us new hope. Jesus has given us a new page. And here's the real scary part. We get a new page every day. A new story to write, a new painting to paint, a new project to begin. And it's exciting, this new life. It's exciting that we have this opportunity. But it's also scary. And when you're scared or when you're not sure what to do, go back to the beginning. Go back to where it all started. See how you have grown and continue that journey of growth. That is the joy and the hope of the new life of the resurrection. We are brought into new life today. Stay happy, healthy, and safe this week. Amen. Thank you.